Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We are under another winter weather advisory until 10 o'clock this morning, and the worst is yet to come later on in the weekend. And that winter weather causing some major issues on I-10 in the Hill Country. We'll have more on that and traffic conditions in and around San Antonio coming up. Looking forward to hearing from you guys. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday. It is February 12th, and it's a very busy morning. A very busy morning. We also have some school closures that we're going to be telling you mm -hmm. about and some delays this Friday. Let's get the very latest from Mike. All eyes on the weather and the roads pretty much all weekend into next week, right? Yes, and today will not be as rainy as yesterday, but the problem is I can't find anything on radar. However, look at this picture out there and you can see a little bit of uh, some droplets. This is 10 over the 410 had a, uh, some mist and windshield this morning. There's a lot of mist being reported around the area and uh, even around New Braunfels. They're reporting a little bit of some freezing mist and visibility is also very low up around Kerrville, mile and a quarter, three miles, New Braunfels. Some fog is being reported. I think it's a little bit of the, the mist. Uh, whatever the case is, it is reduced visibility even over toward Rock Springs and temperatures. So this is we're once again just walking that that fine line 30 Balverde, 30 Bernie stage right at 33 in San Antonio. But then you got Stinson and Randolph both right at freezing. So it's just on that verge. So on some of the elevated surfaces, things may be a little extra slippery. And again, this is going to be going on for the next couple of hours. It's a very, very fine mist, but it doesn't take anything hardly to make things to ice up a little bit. So we do have the winter weather advisory. As a matter of fact, uh, Bear and Guadalupe counties were just re added to this. They had been deleted, got re added given the fact that we do have those temperatures flirting with freezing as well as some of that mist. And this is in the northern half of our area. And again, I would suspect that there are going to be more advisories or even uh, winter storm watches posted or warnings posted over the course of the weekend going into next week. Mold and Mountain Cedar are both on the low side. This morning, uh, just bundle up. Boy, is that still that bone chilling cold. Temperatures are going to be right around freezing, a little bit below freezing, obviously uh, north of San Antonio and just flirting with it. Some of that freezing mist out there, wind out of the northeast at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Only mid 30s again today, so it's going to be cold. It's still going to be on the breezy side. We shouldn't have really any precipitation later on today, but there is more this weekend and especially starting off next week. More on that coming up. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, what is the latest, sir? Well, Micah, we mentioned we have this situation up in the Hill Country westbound I-10 around 290 here. So heading west toward Junction, that is stretch is closed and it has been closed for several uh, hours. So there have been some people out there on I-10 for, for a little bit, and we'll hope to have some more on that uh, later this morning. But anyway, if you need to uh, travel out there uh, for this morning, that travel not advised in that area, and pretty much uh, from the entire stretch of I-10 from uh, Kerrville through Junction, uh, there's a lot of ice and, and poor visibility up there. So that's something uh, to watch out for. Uh, taking a look at I-10, once you get uh, south of Bernie, uh, looking at the travel time near 28 minutes heading westbound, 25 minutes uh, heading into town. Again, there's some uh, some uh, freezing uh, mist possible in the area, especially once you get outside of 1604. So that's something to watch out for. And inside uh, 1604, the travel time looks good. 13 minutes, a little slower uh, than normal, which is a good thing. We want to slow down in these conditions. And here's a look at Transguide. This is I-10 at 1604. 410 at Starcrest traffic. Uh, not many people on the roads. And again, that's a good thing this morning. And uh, Mark and Tiffany will keep an eye on things over here as well. Over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Bear County and state crews are getting everything ready for slick roads. Text out trucks are treating state highways with brine, a salt water solution that helps melt ice on roads. Now officials are urging everyone to stay off the roads this weekend if possible. If you absolutely have to drive this weekend, weather experts say make sure to have that emergency kit in your car. It should include an ice scraper, a flashlight and jumper cables. A handful of area school districts are suspending classes today in a response to this wintry weather that includes the following. Bandera ISD, Blanco, Comfort, and Kerrville ISD. Some are delaying classes by two hours, including Lakey and Sabinal ISD. For a full list, head over to our website.
at ksat.com. Meanwhile, the same storm that has caused that massive and deadly chain reaction crash up in Fort Worth that we were tracking yesterday is moving now into the Carolinas and Southern Virginia with slick roads this morning. But almost every part of the country is bracing for extreme conditions in the next few days. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the details. This morning, a second wave of winter weather as deadly storms sweep the country. From the northeast to the southwest, icy conditions wreaking havoc. Boom! Oh my goodness! In Atlanta, a fiery 26 car crash, leaving at least one person dead. In Austin? I've got approximately 16 cars on this top. I can't access even half of them. 26 cars in this massive wreck. Oh my God. But the biggest disaster was in Fort Worth, where at least six people are dead and 65 injured after this devastating pileup. More than 130 vehicles caught in this chain reaction nightmare, leaving behind a trail of mangled vehicles stretching for a mile and a half. Survivors sharing their gut-wrenching stories of what it was like trapped in all that wreckage. There were cars stacked on top of cars. The fact that I am not severely injured or dead is nothing short of a miracle. Rebecca Benson was on her way to work. You can hear semi after semi after semi hitting the group of cars. Alicia Stone says she had to crawl out of her back window after her car seen here got sandwiched between two semis. You could just hear them yelling, but you, nobody could do anything. Officials are investigating whether the city treated the roads before the freezing rain. And now a new wave of even colder weather is threatening huge swaths of the country. Texas bracing for a second round of icy storms this weekend, while the Midwest will see sub-zero temperatures, wind chills dropping to 30 below zero. Temperatures so low that salt and road chemicals may not be able to keep the roads clear of ice. Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. And remember, Case Hat has you covered right here back at home throughout the entire weekend and into next week. It's 436, 33 degrees. Still ahead, a new report is showing that former President Trump may have been more ill with coronavirus than first thought. And the San Antonio Spurs begin their annual rodeo road trip against the Hawks tonight in Atlanta. We will have a preview. And a look outside with live cam. 33 degrees outside, but it's going to be a cold and cloudy Friday. Your full forecast coming up. Just about 440, former President Donald Trump was reportedly much more ill with COVID-19 in October than the White House publicly admitted at the time. The New York Times reports that the president's oxygen levels dropped so low, doctors considered putting him on a ventilator. A revelation comes as, as the Biden administration ramps up vaccination efforts across the country. The president of the United States, Joe Biden, says the country is on track to deliver 100 million vaccine doses one month earlier than expected. The administration says it has secured 200 million additional doses from Pfizer and Moderna to be delivered this summer. Later today, the CDC is expected to release guidelines for reopening schools, outlining how students can safely return to the classroom. The COVID-19 vaccine might be available to young children in September. That's from the nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci. He says by the time kids go back to school this fall, vaccines could be authorized for first graders. But the makers of the two vaccines authorized in the U.S. have not committed to a specific timeline. The Pfizer and Moderna shots can currently be used for people who are at least 16 or 18, respectively. Both companies are working on clinical trials for children as young as 12, with results expected by mid-year. This will be the shortest rodeo road trip in San Antonio Spurs history distance-wise. That's because six of the seven games will be located in the Eastern Conference, limiting travel to just 3,800 miles. And the NBA has announced two time changes to the Spurs trip that will feature seven games over 15 nights since they are already in Atlanta. Tonight's game against the Hawks starts at 630 our time. You can watch it on Fox Sports Southwest. Then Sunday, they head up to Charlotte to take on the Hornets. You'll find the full schedule on the sports page at ksat.com. Time now, 441, 33 degrees outside. Thanks for starting your day with us here. Up next on GMSA, do you have what it takes to drive on slick, icy Texas roads? We have some important things you need to do to make sure you make it to your destination safely. And a first look at an ongoing legal battle between Britney Spears and her father.
Welcome back. Britney Spears' father loses his bid to retain control over her estate. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the battle over Britney Spears' conservatorship. Back in court as fans show up to rally just outside. I just hope Britney feels the support that we all are sending, all the love and support. Britney, we are here to support you. Lawyers for her and her father, Jamie Spears, fighting over who controls her estate, worth an estimated $60 million. In court Thursday, the attorney alleging it's no secret his client doesn't want her father as conservator. Jamie Spears' lawyer striking back, saying that in court documents from 2019, Spears herself had requested for her father to be her sole conservator. The court hearing comes as a new documentary framing Britney Spears takes a closer look at her conservatorship, which was put in place more than a decade ago. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on what's next for Britney Spears. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Well, as we've seen in the past 24 hours here in Texas, driving on icy roads is no joke, and it's something many of us are just not accustomed to. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moore. It's with what you should do if you have to drive on unpredictable roads. This is a scary example of what can happen if you hit black ice. That's the moisture that freezes on asphalt, often invisible to drivers. The first roads to get icy and dicey are bridges and overpasses because of the frigid air both above and below. If there was ever a time when slow and steady wins the race applies, it's in this case where you have the potential to lose traction. Jennifer Stockberger oversees the test track for Consumer Reports. Her advice, if you have to drive in icy conditions, allow plenty of space between you and other drivers. When it comes to stopping, she says your all-wheel drive won't help. Let your anti-lock brakes do their thing. If they start to pulse against your foot, they're working. Just maintain pressure. And if your car does begin to slide, what do you do? Well, there are two kinds of skids oversteer and understeer. With oversteer, it's very intuitive. You turn into the skid. When you gain grip, you end up going where you want to go. In understeer, you're turning, but the car's going straight ahead and your gut is to want to dial in more steering. Don't do that. Keep the wheel steady where you're headed so that when you gain grip, you're going where you want to be. In both cases, avoid abrupt motions, easy on the brakes and the throttle until you gain control. If the roads do get icy, the safest bet is to just stay off of them. But if you do have to drive, take it easy and buckle up. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Uh, great advice going into this weekend, particularly. Mm -hmm. And we definitely saw those road conditions yesterday that were very dangerous. Fort Worth was unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in the state of Texas. Other parts of the country during the winter, of course, it happens. Yeah, and we are seeing some road closures in parts of Kerrville today. Yeah, so. that, uh, I'm sorry, I had to start to step over you there, <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany. Uh, uh, but there is a, a lot going on. You mentioned this closure. This is uh, near the Kerr, it starts near the Kerr Kimball County line here at 290 and heads up toward Junction. Uh, so a full closure westbound of I-10. And again, this has been going on for several hours. There's a lot of uh, roads were in pretty bad condition according to TxDOT up there. So there have been people probably out there for uh, several hours now. So we hope that they're okay and they have those sort of cold uh, weather uh, tips we've been telling you about, uh, including, go ahead and I'll mention it while I, while I have you. If you are planning for the weekend, we know we're gonna have uh, some bad and cold weather. Uh, just make sure you have some blankets in the car for everyone who's gonna be traveling, some snacks, uh, some maybe some uh, water, things like that, in case something like this uh, happens to you. We don't want that to happen, but we're already seeing it this morning. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. Uh, this uh, orange on the map is representative of some mist of some fog conditions up there in the hill country. Uh, so you can uh, see that. So the visibility also pretty low at this hour as well. So again, travel not advised. Uh, let's just say from uh, Bernie North and West uh, on I-10 this morning. And looking here in town here in uh, San Antonio, this is a uh, Bandera inside 1604 and 410. 11 minutes uh, heading northbound, 10 minutes heading southbound, so that looks good. But again, some uh, concerns and issues, especially once you get on to 1604. And taking a look uh, on the north side there, 11 minutes uh, between Bandera and 35, 12 minutes. So that looks good now, 
But again, uh, take it easy. We have some mist falling. When I was coming in, there was some mist falling, so that's something to uh, keep in mind as well. And looking further uh, to the west, about 14 minutes along that stretch. So things, travel time's looking good at this hour, but again, uh, watch out for that and we'll keep an eye on it for you. Here's Transguide 410 at uh, Starcrest. You can see travel on the roads 410 at Callahan. And let's try and get uh, one more in here before, while well, I have you, 410 at Calebra. So uh, you see traffic uh, building there, but again, take it easy and, and we'll be here uh, this morning and through the weekend to uh, keep track of things for you. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, this morning I was thinking about some of your past physics lessons about how it takes longer for solids like roads and bridges to cool down. Now we've got enough time to cool things down, add moisture on top of that, and that's really the recipe for disaster, isn't it? Well, you know, yesterday we were talking about how uh, the surface streets, mm -hmm. they were still warm. The, the ground is still fairly warm. Right. But as time goes on over this weekend, when we stay in the low 30s, obviously the ground's going to cool off. So there's going to be more of an opportunity for even surface streets to get a little bit uh, slippery. But this morning, I mean, again, it is that, that little fine line. And, you know, to say out there at the airport, it's 33. Well, that's one thermometer. Uh, yeah, a couple hundred yards away from that. It could be right at freezing. We do have that mist out there. This is a 10 at 410 and you know this these overpasses right here, these interchange ramps there, 410 and I-10, they could be on the slippery side. The best thing to do, like Sam was talking about, just slow down. And if you can stay on surface streets, that would, would obviously be a lot better. And some of the visibilities that he was just talking about, one mile now in Kerrville. A lot of this, there is some fog being reported. I think a lot of it may be some of the mist out there as well. Three miles Uvalde, mile and three quarters in Rock Springs. And temperatures, again, it is, I got to use the analogy, it's, it's that little tightrope that everybody's walking right now. 33, Helotus, Rio Medina, the airport, but then Randolph and Stinson are both at 32 and uh, freezing temperatures out in the hill country. So again, these are just those particular thermometers in between. It could be uh, a right at freezing or a little bit below that. Plus we have room to cool down. We always talk about dew points. Temperatures can't get any lower than what these numbers are. But since this is lower than 32 degrees, there is the chance that we could drop down a degree or two in the next couple of hours. So things could get a little bit iffy on the elevated roadways this morning. On top of that, there's a wind out there. And boy, with that cold, damp air and these uh, wind chill temperatures, 23 is what it feels like in town, 21 Balverde, and it's going to stay fairly breezy throughout the weekend. So here's what's going to be going on today. We've got the uh, winter weather advisory through the rest of uh, the morning up until 10 o'clock. Uh, it's pretty much just going to be cloudy and windy today with cold temperatures. Then uh, there could be a little bit of uh, maybe some you know mist here and there. Tomorrow morning, a little bit more is going to be possible. Then we get into the evening hours or the, the mid-afternoon, and we're going to have the chance, albeit a small chance, for a little bit of uh, some mist or some freezing rain. Sunday, same situation, especially Sunday night. That's when things really start to ramp up. We get a secondary surge of cold air coming in here on Sunday into Monday. It's going to be starting off as some freezing rain. And then it looks like most all of that would change over to snow in the overnight hours early on Monday morning. The good news is it looks like this is just going to be the first part of the day on Monday. But on top of that, though, we clear out and then it gets brutally cold Tuesday morning. Some of the coldest air we've seen around here in years. 34 degrees today at noon and then later on this afternoon 36 is all I'm going for. Lots of clouds out there. A bit of a breeze. We do have the winter weather advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning for northern half of the area, including San Antonio, New Braunfels, Seguin. Now, tomorrow we'll still have a small chance for a little wintry mix. Same thing on Sunday. Notice how low temperatures are going to be right around freezing. Then Monday we're going to be down in the low 20s starting off. Probably not getting above freezing. Tuesday morning going for 15 for low temperature here in town and then finally making it above freezing. Of course, Sarah and Katie are going to be over here or in here over the weekend. Justin comes in this afternoon, Adam tonight, and everybody's going to be handling that. We're all all hands on deck with this. So it's uh, yeah, it's cold. It's cold. It's let's, be messy. let's get those outdoor pets some shelter for the next at least probably the yeah. week or and, so. And if you don't have one of those little things to cover your outdoor spigot, mm -hmm. if you can like uh, wrap some some towels around mm -hmm. it or something like that, and even put a plastic bag over it just to kind of a little bit of something to help Any, keep it. Anything warm. would help. Yeah. And this is just the perfect time to prepare for this event. Yep. 454, 33 degrees.
Up next, it'll be a good weekend to stay inside and stream some new movies. We'll tell you about several that are being nominated for awards. There are some new movies streaming on this weekend, plus the newest season of American Idol is starting up. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Deputy Chairman Fred Hampton of the Illinois Black Panther Party. A good weekend for streaming new movies that are being nominated for awards. Judas and the Black Messiah, out today on HBO Max and in limited theaters, based on the true story of an FBI informant who infiltrated the Black Panthers in Chicago in the 60s. Minari, out in limited release, also getting a lot of buzz. The story of an immigrant family trying to make it in America. And Land stars Robin Wright, her directorial debut. It's about a woman so consumed with grief that she decides to isolate herself in the Rockies. And Wright tells me the hardest part about picking this particular film for her first behind the camera. It was so cold <laughs> there. <laughs> Just, I, we need another word for freezing. It was like freezing was an understatement. Um, it was, you know, trying trying to keep yourself sane in, in the weather. Land is also in select theaters and streaming on demand. Hey, you Also, some challenges in filming the new season of American Idol, the auditions, and everything else done with strict COVID protocols, or virtually. Judge Katy Perry telling me the toughest thing for her. Not being able to actually hug the contestants, oh. especially when they're hurting oh. and when they're sharing their stories or they've triumphed. Watch it with your Valentine. The new season of American Idol debuts Sunday night on ABC. And happy birthday this Friday to Arsenio Hall. The actor, comedian, and talk show host is 65, while actress Christina Ricci is 41. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Just about 5 o'clock, 33 degrees. Ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you about an artificial intelligence system that recognizes and rewards dogs for good behavior. That's coming up in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. There is more mist out there and temperatures are flirting with freezing. Take it easy driving this morning. And that winter weather already causing a major closure of I-10 in the Hill Country. We'll have more on that and roads around San Antonio coming up. And a good morning to you, everyone. It is Friday. It is February 12th. It is going to be Valentine's Day soon, but we need to prepare for this weather and the dangerous conditions out there. That's right. Warmest hearts may be about the only warm thing around town in the coming days. Mike Osterhage. Yeah, uh, it's cold and it is definitely going to be getting colder as time rolls on and we are going to be seeing uh, some of these temperatures that will just be again ridiculously cold and extended periods of cold temperatures uh, going into especially later on in the weekend. I want to show you um, some of the visibility right now. Now, and there's a little bit of fog. There is some mist out there. And as you can see, visibility is down to about a mile in Kerrville. Six tenths in five Bernie. So not anything ridiculous. Um, Rock Springs mile and a half right now. You, you validate at two and a half miles uh, visibility. There's again, it is some fog. It is some mist that um, is just making things kind of kind of tough to see. We do have the winter weather advisory that remains in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, for a while, Guadalupe and Bear County were deleted from this, but then all of a sudden some mist started cropping up here. There's a little bit of it. And you saw that on live cam and then temperatures are flirting right around freezing where it's officially 32 degrees right now out there at the airport. So technically it is freezing and that means some of those elevated roadways could be just a little bit on the slippery side. Then we have the wind chills to deal with. It feels like 21 Bernie stage. Same thing at Randolph and uh, 33 is the wind chill in Helotus. Throughout the rest of today, some mist this morning and some of it is going to be freezing. There has been uh, reports of some uh, frozen mist on some of the uh, elevated roadways up around New Braunfels and then further up to the north and then it remains cloudy and very cold temperatures only in the mid 30s today. Some wintry mix again tomorrow. Still very cold. Then we go into Sunday. We get a secondary surge of colder air coming on in here, and that's especially going to be Sunday night into Monday, and we are going to have some snow, some freezing rain. It looks like it'd be freezing rain first of all, then changing over to snow overnight Sunday into Monday, and it's going to be messy there. Then extremely cold temperatures, some of the coldest we have seen around here in years, plus an extended period of temperatures below freezing. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King, and you were talking about that mess out there in Kerrville. 
Yes, uh, and we'll get to that in, in just a second, Mike, but you were talking about some of the elevated roadways. This is, uh, of course, uh, I-10 at the Y. This is an area that we'll be watching uh, not only today, but through the weekend. You get any sort of moisture on these elevated uh, surfaces. Uh, that could cause some trouble, some slick spots, so watch out for that. But at the moment, uh, things are looking good, traffic flowing well. Mike, you mentioned the situation out in uh, Kerrville, or just to the north and west of Kerrville. This is the Kerr-Kimball County line. This is Junction. This is I-10 closed for about five miles westbound, and it has been for several hours. Let's underscore that, several hours. So there might be some people out there who have been uh, stranded here for a long time. And even if you're heading down in toward Kerrville, heading eastbound on I-10, you see that traffic there is pretty slow. Uh, so even if, if you are moving if you're not in the closure area, traffic is really slow. The roads are, according to TxDOT, are, are snow and, and ice covered out there, probably ice covered uh, out there. So that's something to uh, keep in mind uh, this morning. Here in San Antonio, uh, things mostly looking okay uh, on the maps at the moment. But again, uh, have sort of that mist out there. there was, it was misting when I was coming in with temperatures around freezing, particularly you get up here. Uh, that's something to watch out for and plan for some extra time. And uh, there's some old stuff in there, so we'll, <laughs> we'll skip over that. And this is a look at the uh, 1604 uh, section on the north side, 17 uh, miles uh, minutes right now between 35 and I-10. But again, that is slower than normal, so maybe we're already seeing some of the impacts of the little mist out there. So keep in mind, uh, uh, Mike and I will be here to watch it for you. Over to you, Mark and Tiffany. Two families out in the cold after a fire destroyed their homes. It broke out around 2 this morning in the 6600 block of Montgomery. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Good morning, Katrina. Do they have any idea how this started? Well, good morning. Uh, no word just yet. We have arson investigators here right now. A uh, firefighters say, though, it does appear to have started uh, possibly in the garage, at least that's what the people who live here told them when they called them around two o'clock this morning. I'll give you a look at what's going on right now. Uh, you can see it's a duplex, two sides of the house uh, burned, heavy damage. In fact, firefighters say this house is destroyed. Uh, there were a total of eight people, four in each of these homes, as well as a cat. They all got out safely. Uh, they are no longer out in the cold, I'm, I'm happy to report. Firefighters say that they were taking all of those people to a hotel uh, to put them up because, again, they cannot come back to their homes. Uh, they don't know how this started, but one of the people woke up, found the fire in the garage, called it in. By the time firefighters got here, they said that the wind had whipped up the flames so much that they were coming through the roof. So that was their big struggle this morning was the strong winds that were whipping those flames up. They had to call in extra help. Bear County did uh, from as far away as Fort Sam to come and help them knock down this fire. Again, no injuries. Uh, the, all the people did get out safely, but unfortunately, it seems that they have lost their homes. Reporting live in Northeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Hey, folks, we do want to remind you that a handful of area school districts are canceling classes today in response to the winter weather, and that includes Bandera ISD, Blanco ISD, Comfort ISD, and Kerrville ISD. Some schools are delaying school by two hours. Those include Lakey ISD and Sabinal ISD. For this full list and recap, go to ksat.com. New this morning, a man is in serious condition after police say he was shot while trying to force entry into a home with a pickaxe. It happened just before 1 a.m. in the 100 block of Arlington Court, just south of the downtown area near I-10 and I-37. San Antonio police say as the man was trying to get into the house through a window, the homeowner inside with a gun and fired three shots. SAPD says the intruder was hit at least once in the chest and ran to a nearby fire station to get help. He was taken to a hospital. No other injuries were reported. We're approaching 509, 33 degrees. Go ahead on GMSA, how your Apple Watch may be the key to detecting early COVID-19 symptoms. Plus, why some experts say Valentine's Day this year may not be as lovey-dovey as it has been in the past. And a look outside, it looks like traffic is ready picking up, but be cautious out there. We're, we're going to have your full forecast coming up. Is love lost? Spending for Valentine's Day 2021 expected to go down, according to a new survey. Sarah Costa explains why the pandemic may be to blame.
Last year's spending on Valentine's Day was forecasted at $27.4 billion, but this year the National Retail Federation believes we won't spend as much this year. Due to the pandemic, the National Retail Federation is forecasting that $21.8 billion will be spent on Valentine's Day this year. That's down from last year's $27.4 billion. According to the NRF survey, of 7,882 adult consumers, 74% of Americans said the pandemic will directly impact their plans for Valentine's Day, although 73% said they still plan on celebrating in some form. Only 24% of consumers plan to have an evening out, the lowest in the survey's history. However, 41% said they plan on a special dinner at home. Those planning to celebrate Valentine's Day are expected to spend on average of $164.76. That's down by about $32 per person from last year. The most popular Valentine's Day shopping destination this year is expected to be online with 39%. Department stores are next at 29%, followed by discount stores at 28%. The most popular gifts are expected to be candy at 54%, greeting cards are next at 44%, and flowers at 36%. Back to you guys. And balloons at 1%. Just kidding. 513, <laughs> 33 degrees. Up next, how your Apple Watch might be able to detect if you have COVID-19. Plus how Alexa, yes I said it out loud, is making it easier to share your favorite songs with family and friends. My plaque psoriasis, the itching, the burning. The stinging, my skin was no longer mine. My psoriatic arthritis made my joints stiff, swollen, painful. Emerge Tremfiant. With Tremphia, adults with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis can uncover clearer skin and improve symptoms at 16 weeks. Tremphia is also approved for adults with active psoriatic arthritis. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Tremphia may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Tremphia. Emerge Tremphiant. Janssen can help you explore cost support options. Such a bright crystal. In today's Tech Bites, a new study finds that the Apple Watch can detect COVID-19 up to seven days before testing. Researchers say that's significant because the virus can be contagious well before symptoms appear. Subtle changes in a person's heart rate could predict infection. Listening to a song? Alexa can now help you share it with your friends. The new function can send a song or the name of an artist to another Alexa-enabled device. All you have to do is say, Alexa, share this song with and give your friend's name. Finally, a dog treat system that uses artificial intelligence. The device drops treats when it detects that your dog is in a position you asked for. The developers say it can analyze the animal's position in just one second, and they claim it is more than 90% accurate. Who's a good machine? You're a good machine. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Oh, I see what she did there. Okay. <laughs> 518, 32 degrees. And it's going to be crazy weather this weekend and mm -hmm. messy Monday as That's we right. were talking. Is it a messy Friday on the roads? In uh, Hill Country, yes it is. Uh, we've been telling you about this uh, c uh, closure here on I-10 uh, near the Kerr-Kimball County line. But again, as we were talking about, you can see uh, the delay. So Junction is up here. Uh, this is the closure. Kerrville is down here, and this is a, a Kerr County. And you can see uh, some visibility issues as well. That's what the uh, orange on, on this is heading out there. So travel not advised between Kerrville and Junction uh, right now. And we'll hope to have more on that throughout the morning. Here in San Antonio, things are mostly uh, looking uh, okay, but we do have a bit of a slowdown here. This is a uh, 1604 in the north side, northeast side at, at Judson. Traffic down to 26 uh, miles per hour. So if you're heading on uh, 26, that should be westbound, excuse me, I'll fix that. Uh, watch out for that. A 281 uh, coming from uh, Bolverde Road to 1604. Uh, travel time's looking good. Seven uh, minutes uh, right now uh, there and six minutes uh, heading uh, 
excuse me, hit six minutes heading southbound, seven minutes heading uh, northbound, a little bit slower than normal. And that's a good thing, as we've said, and we missed this at the top but here to look at the travel times fairly close to normal 26 minutes coming in from uh, Bernie 27 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. Of course, that is into downtown San Antonio. And here's a look at a trans guide. I attended UTSA Boulevard at the moment. That looks fine, as does uh, 37 at fair. I have an issue at 410. We'll have more on that coming up, guys. All right, thank you very much, Samuel. Mike, I guess one of the themes going to this weekend is that we should all be vigilant and start preparing. Yeah, because we're going to look at uh, potentially, I was just doing a little bit of research going back in history, and I was trying to find something colder, and what I found thus far is we're going to be the coldest forecast low temperature Tuesday morning that we've been in about 35 years. Unbelievable. Back since the uh, the mid 80s, what I found we've been in the teens since then, but not quite this cold. And also uh, one thing, and I was just thinking about this yesterday, of course, it was, you know, just raining and coming down and we had some of that icing. And I think that's, you know, put people on on higher alert, if you will. But don't be kind of at a lull just because there's not anything showing up on radar because there's a lot of mist as you just saw on that live cam picture over there at uh, 10 at 410. And we do have some reduced visibilities out there in toward Kerrville. I think it's mainly because of this mist, a little bit of fog thrown in, but it's, you know, scattered about the area. This is the most important thing. These temperatures are, we just dropped down to 32 degrees. Now that doesn't mean things freeze instantaneously, but you get the up elevated roadways, all the interchange ramps that are up, you know, 20, 30, 50 feet up in the air, something like that. So they are in this freezing air. And even though there's may not be any mist or that little bit of mist, that's going to cause a lot of slippery conditions. And even around Lotus, Port SA, that's just one thermometer out there. So in and around this area, it could be flirting right around freezing. And this is not good as far as the, the dew point. So we've dropped down one degree in the dew point temperature, which means there is room. We could, in theory, we're not going to this morning, but we could, in theory, drop down to 28 degrees. Degrees. So you can't drop any lower than that, but as long as you got that room to cool down even more, we can stay at 32 or fluctuate another degree or so downward, which is not good. So you got to really watch it this morning with that fine mist because, you know, it's it's so fine. I hardly even had to use windshield wipers this morning, but it is enough to make the roads damp. All right, high temperatures yesterday. This is deceiving. This was early on in the morning. We stayed in the mid 30s all day long. Today we're looking at uh, well, the highs would be 44 degrees around the area down there in Laredo, but most everybody will just be staying in the 30s. It is going to be breezy enough to really add that that bite to some of these temperatures, and then the humidity is going to be relatively high, so that's going to make it that damp chill. Throughout the rest of the morning, we have a couple of scattered uh, sprinkly showers are going to be possible today. Uh, I think this model may overdo it just a little bit, but there will be some more wintry mixed precipitation around tomorrow, limited amounts, and then tomorrow night into Sunday, perhaps a bit more, and then Sunday evening especially is when we're going to start to see more of the uh, freezing rain move in here. We get that secondary surge of very, very cold air moving in here, and that'll be late in the day, Sunday into Monday, and that's going to make for some uh, what looks like right now still some messy conditions on Monday. 34 degrees today at noon. Uh, cloudy skies basically will have the mist to deal with this morning. 36 uh, for an afternoon temperature. Winter weather advisory remains in, in effect. San Antonio up to the north up until 10 o'clock this morning. So we're still seeing some uh, freezing on some of the roadways as nearby as uh, New Braunfels was reporting some earlier this morning. And temperatures, we will be below freezing, at or below freezing every morning this weekend. 22 Monday, 15. That's what I'm going for on Tuesday if we uh, do clear out and some ridiculous wind chills. And of course, Katie and Sarah, they've got it covered this weekend. KSAT does have you covered. Thank you, yep. Mike. 523, 32 degrees. Still ahead in your morning spotlight, two films new in theaters today already racking up nominations before they even debut. Two new movies already receiving plenty of award season buzz and even nominations. CNN's David Daniel has a look in today's Hollywood Minute. What a beautiful family. Glad you're here. Minari, about a Korean family starting a farm in 1980s Arkansas, is drawing raves even before it opens. The drama has received dozens of awards from critics groups, plus a trio of SAG Award nominations, and it's up for Best Foreign Language Motion Picture at the Golden Globe Awards. Minari opens in select theaters Friday and on VOD February 26th. Call this number. Speak to my mother. 
tell her um, something nice. Nice reviews for the Mauritanian star Tahar Rahim. The French actor, who plays longtime Guantanamo prisoner Mohamedou Ould Slahi, is up for a Golden Globe Award and Actor of the Year honors from the London Critics Circle. Director Kevin MacDonald says Rahim was perfect for the role. He has the same spirit as, as, as Mohamedou. He's got this incredible warmth and generosity. And uh, he also happens to just be a brilliant brilliant performer who improvises, who provides so much more than what's on the page. You asked me to set fire to this place, but I'm still sleeping. The Mauritanian opens in theaters Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check, 527, 32 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the CDC is expected to release new guidelines for reopening schools today as educators and officials all over the country continue to grapple with how to move forward. Morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is February 12th. A lot of news this morning. We are keeping track of the school closures and delays. We'll bring you that in just a bit. Let's go right to Mike. Get an update on what's going to happen Friday and in the coming days. And Mike, you really summed it up saying where this is going to be the coldest air in decades. Yeah, I was just uh, looking at some of the data going back to the 80s uh, when we had some temperatures even down to single digits. So this is going to be about the coldest since then. So we're looking at what? you know 30 maybe 30 plus years since we've seen air this cold we have been down in the teens just a handful of times in the past 20 years I'm going to show you some of this coming up in the next half hour uh, the most important thing to see this morning is those little drops on the lens there there's a lot of mist around the area this morning and then we've got these temperatures which right now we are at freezing at the airport and the dew points at 28 we've got a wind out there out of the north at 13 so there is a wind chill but obviously it is important that the temperature is at 32 now that doesn't mean everything is just freezing instantaneously, but those elevated roadways like out there at 10 at 410 up in the air ground is still relatively warm. So it, that moisture left over from yesterday, some of this mist can be freezing on contact potentially. So that's what we're going to have to be on the lookout for. And then you go out into the hill country and obviously we got a very good freeze and there are reports of some uh, road closures out there past uh, Kerrville. Sam's going to have more on that in just a second. There's also been some reports earlier this morning of some uh, freezing on some of the roadways up around New Braunfels. Winter weather advisory remains in effect until 10 o'clock. The northern half of our area, Guadalupe and Bear Counties, keep pointing out was they were deleted from this uh, in the overnight hours. And then a couple of hours ago, Weather Service obviously reassessed the situation, added uh, these two counties back in. So you got to watch it and just take it easy. Plus, there's some reduced visibility. A lot of this is because of the mist and or a little bit of fog, especially going out in toward the hill country, Kerrville, Rock Springs, and then we've got some down here along the, the coastal plain. Uh, it's going to stay cold today. We're not going to have the heavy rain like we had around here yesterday. We got the mist this morning and basically just cloudy skies throughout the rest of the day. Wind out of the northeast 10 to 15, so 36 degrees is going to feel much much, much colder than that. Still a couple of more opp opportunities for some wintry mix tomorrow and Sunday, and then especially Sunday night, Monday morning with much, much colder air. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Uh, Traffic Authority, Samuel King, what is the latest, sir? Well, we have some issues picking up in uh, San Antonio. Now this is a four, this is the transguide view from 410 and in Ingram. You see a couple of lanes uh, blocked there. Uh, traffic uh, starting uh, to build. So this is some of the things that uh, we've been talking about as the temperature uh, drops here in San Antonio. We might start to see some of the issues on the road. Not exactly sure if this is uh, weather related, but we are starting to see uh, some of these uh, road uh, closures, lane blockages across the area, and we'll tell you more about that coming up. Uh, and here's a look at the travel time right now on 410 in that area. Still about seven minutes right now, but I do expect that to increase uh, here coming up shortly. Uh, now we've been talking all morning about uh, this incident out here. This is a this is Kerr County. This is Kimball County. That's Junction I-10 in between those heading uh, westbound is closed. Also some delays eastbound. A lot of uh, visibility issues out here. Uh, some ice on the roads. Uh, people have been stranded here for hours. Uh, so uh, that's something that uh, we're going to keep continue to keep an eye on. We hope to uh, have a report from there, some updates uh, from that area coming up later here on uh, GMSA. But again, I-10 heading westbound uh, between Kerrville and Junction closed for about a five mile stretch. Travel not advised in that area. Mike was also mentioning uh, New Braunfels. Uh, we have some reports of, of freezing uh, on the roadway, so also be careful in this area. Doesn't look like it's really causing any delays on 35. 
but you see some uh, issues here on uh, 46 and uh, 337. So that's something to watch out for as well. We'll keep an eye on things not only today, but throughout the weekend with this winter weather. And we'll have more uh, coming up in just a little bit. Tiffany and Mark, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. A handful of area school districts are suspending classes today in response to the inclement weather. That includes Bandera ISD, Blanco ISD, Comfort ISD, and Kerrville ISD. Some are delaying school by two hours, including Lakey ISD and Sabaton ISD. For a full list, just head to our website, ksat.com. And new this morning, investigators with the Bear County Fire Marshal's Office are digging through what is left of two families' homes. Their duplex in the 6600 block of Montgomery Drive went up in flames a few hours ago. Katrina Weber is there now with a live report. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that the wind was working against firefighters. Well, that's right. They say that the, they had 20 mile per hour gusts that just whipped up the flames, had them coming through the roof. And so they fought as hard as they could, but these two homes were lost. Uh, this is a duplex here. Again, 6600 block of Montgomery. You can see the arson investigators going through uh, the rubble there. Now, I also have some video to show you. This fire broke out around two o'clock this morning. Firefighters say one of the people who lives here called them saying that he saw a fire in his garage. Uh, by the time they got here, though, again, the flames coming through the roof. Firefighters had to call for help. They went second alarm. They called for help from as far away as Fort Sam. Uh, they did the best they could, but again, the house, the duplex destroyed. Now, there were four people living in each side as well as a cat. Everyone did get out safely. Firefighters told me that they were going to take those people to a hotel uh, to, to put them up because, again, their homes are destroyed here. No word on the cause. That is what arson investigators are currently looking for. Reporting live in Northeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. It's been more than a year since off-duty SAISD Detective Cliff Martinez was killed at San Antonio area IHOP in the 700 block of Hot Wells Boulevard. Martinez working security at the restaurant when he was assaulted by two men. According to SAPD, both men got into a vehicle and ran him over on purpose. Although the men were later arrested, Martinez's family says the community lost a hero. The school district has started a scholarship in his name, but his family hopes to raise more money. He'll be raffling off a 2010 Camaro later this month. His father, Albert, hopes his son's legacy will inspire the next generation of law enforcement officers. I thought, well, what a wonderful way to uh, uh, bring uh, the memory of Cliff throughout the city and to, uh, throughout the uh, school district. Family still selling tickets. That sports car will be raffled off on February 21st. They hope to raise $100,000. For more information, check out this story at ksat.com. Well, today is the day the CDC is expected to release its new guidelines on the best way to safely reopen more schools. And as CNN's Britt Conway reports, it comes in the midst of heated debate, lawsuits, and some concerning stats on the issue. The president will not rest until every school is open five days a week. That is our goal. But how to make that happen is the question, with no one right answer, which is why there's so much angst around CDC guidance on the matter. At this point, it's been a varied approach, sometimes down to the district or even school level, and it continues to be a flashpoint issue around the country. In Wisconsin, there's a plan to divvy up federal COVID-19 aid based on a district's number of in-person school days. It's still up to the local school board. If they feel it is unsafe to open, don't open. You, would you really open for money if you thought it was that unsafe? In California, the city of San Francisco is seeking an emergency court order to force its public schools to open for in-person instruction. In Minnesota, where schools are under executive order to follow the state's safe learning plan, there's a proposal to strip the governor of the power to change school plans during a peacetime emergency. We at the local level have a pulse on our community values, and we represent these communities in our decision making. I do not know what the best decisions for Minneapolis public schools are, but I have a good idea what works in Stillwater. And speaking of work, a Stanford professor warns students in the U.S. could see their lifelong earnings cut by an average of 6 to 9 percent unless schools are able to make up for learning losses. I'm Britt Conway reporting. 
Here's where we stand with coronavirus cases in Bear County. The seven day average now at 890. 22 deaths were also included in the latest report. Meanwhile, 791 COVID-19 patients are being treated in local hospitals. Friday morning, time check, just about 540, 33 degrees. So ahead, trying to get back into shape, we'll tell you about some sneaky weight gaining foods that may be lurking in your pantry. And next, the great grape nuts crisis has been averted. How Post Consumer Brands is reacting after it experienced a cereal shortage. And a look outside with live cam. Traffic is picking up as the morning continues. We are keeping a close eye on the roads and weather. The latest coming up. Welcome back, 542 and your morning consumer headlines. Grape Nuts fans rejoice. The cereal shortage has been resolved. Post Consumer Brand says Grape Nuts will start shipping at normal levels by mid-March. For weeks, there's been a shortage sparked by supply chain constraints and higher demand. To make up for the trouble, Post is offering a free Grape Nuts for a Year contest plus $1.50 off coupons as a token of apology on its Facebook page. Grape Nuts has actually been around since 1897 when it was developed by founder C.W. Post himself. Strangely enough, it's made with wheat and barley. No grapes, no nuts. And Wendy's is taking its insults to another social media platform, and there's no holding back. The fast food chain celebrated National Roast Day on Thursday, but for the first time, it was on TikTok. National Roast Day is a day to insult people and other companies in a fun way and challenge them to come up with their own best slams. It's posted a video on line and it says we only roast the ones we love. Here's the problem. National Roast Day is every day now with social media. I mean, that's just not fun <laughs> at all, is it? No, it's not fun. Okay. <laughs> 543, 33 degrees. Up next, we'll tell you about some of the food in your pantry that will make you gain weight faster than you think. 546, the average American gains one to two pounds every year. This might sound small, but over the years, it can add up to big pounds. David Sears has some of the sneaky weight gaining foods lurking in your pantry that are making you fat. Pizza, chips, ice cream, soda, candy, at all these fattening foods, do you know which one is the worst? Probably soda and ice cream. Probably pizza. Yeah. Chips are my favorite. A study out of the New England Journal of Medicine found that potato chips are the food most likely linked to weight gain. It contributes to more than one and a half pounds of weight gain over a four year period. Another weight gaining culprit, cereal. Most cereals are high in refined sugar and low in fiber, so you may need a couple of bowls of cereal before you feel full. Instead, look to eggs and toast for a more fulfilling meal with less calories. And that syrup that you love for your pancakes and waffles may not actually be maple syrup, but really a mixture of artificial flavors, caramel color, and high fructose corn syrup. A study out of Princeton University found rats that consumed high fructose corn syrup gained more weight than those with table sugar. Having a salad for lunch? Then skip the store-bought dressing. The high levels of sodium, added sugars, and high fructose corn syrup add up to a lot of fat. Just two tablespoons can put you over the limit in your daily recommended limits of saturated fat, sugar, and sodium. Instead, all you need is olive oil, vinegar, salt, and pepper for homemade salad dressing. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. 548, it's time to get an update on the roads. And traffic is picking up. Samuel, what can you tell us? Well, here's a look at a uh, trans guy, Tiffany and Mark. This is uh, 35 and 16 and 4 on the northeast side. And you kind of see the condensation there uh, on the camera. It gives you an idea of uh, the, the uh, temperature uh, outside uh, and what's going on. You can kind of see uh, some sort of blockage there. It had a clear view earlier, but mention it, it's cold and there's a little bit of mist in the air and this is what you get sometimes uh, on uh, the cameras. Let's take a, another look here. This is a 410. I was mentioning Ingram. This was a, a crash uh, reported uh, here, but it looks like that has just cleared within the uh, past couple minutes. Uh, but you see traffic is starting to move a little slow there and TxDOT does report and it's showing up on the map here. Uh, so this is uh, the crossroads area 10 at uh, 410. Uh, some ice uh, on uh, the roadway there. 
Uh, so, and that's showing up here. So if you're, if, if you're in this area, watch out for that. And that's probably accounting for why you saw uh, the traffic there moving as slowly uh, as it is now after that uh, crash there just a minute ago. So we probably expect some more of these issues uh, this morning. And finally, again, the situation up in the Hill Country, uh, I-10 westbound uh, closed. Uh, our Stephen uh, Cavazos has been uh, uh, texting with people who've said they've been there overnight. And then we saw the roads there got kind of snow and ice covered. So we hope to hear uh, more from him uh, coming up. It does take a little bit to, to get out there, especially in these conditions, as you can imagine. But uh, we just saw some uh, pictures, guys, and uh, definitely a uh, serious situation uh, out there. So travel again on I-10, not advised. Thanks for the heads up, Samuel. We'll know you'll keep us posted. Mike Osterhage is here. Mike, where do you even begin with all that's about to happen the next three to five days? Well, I just with the current situation out there within the hour there's some freezing drizzle being reported out here at the airport now uh it's encouraging to see nothing showing up on the lens and it looks like traffic's moving along fairly well and this doesn't mean things just freeze up instantaneously but a little bit of it uh, is out there and that's because temperatures are right at freezing freezing drizzle has been reported at randolph as well up around uh new Braunfels. there was some even though we're not getting a, a temperature reading from there and then as i was talking about heading out into the hill country obviously where temperatures are well down into the upper 20s and like i said we've got a little bit of room to even cool down somewhat so that's not a good thing with these dew points albeit very very high you still got that that little wiggle room of a couple of degrees here and there which is why temperatures went from they were 33 pretty much overnight here in town. Yesterday we stayed in the mid 30s and that was overnight and then 33 and then we dropped down to freezing just about uh, an hour, hour and a half ago. We still got a fairly decent breeze out there as well. So wind chill temperatures uh, feels like 23 at the airport, 22 right now in Bulverde, 20 at Bernie stage and visibility heading out in toward uh, I-10 and toward Kerrville really does start to drop down. Rock Springs, Fredericksburg, and then down here along the coastal plain. A lot of this, uh, some fog, some mist out there as well. All right, computer model throughout the rest of the afternoon. We have some of the mist around this morning. Uh, this model has a little bit uh, later on this afternoon, a mention of some mist. Temperatures will be up into the mid 30s, so it's gonna be close to it. And if there is anything further up into the hill country, it would uh, be freezing, but there's not gonna be much doesn't take much, obviously, but obviously nothing like what we had around here yesterday. Now, tomorrow we will have a little bit of, or at least the chance for a little bit of freezing, uh, some sprinkles out in portions of the hill country in the morning hours. And then throughout the afternoon, maybe a little bit more and more is going to start to develop going into the evening hours. Then overnight, and this is kind of switching computer models. This one goes a little further into the future. Overnight into Sunday, we are going to have some of these uh, light showers around here, more like most most likely freezing and then more is going to be picking up Sunday night and overnight into Monday and that's when we get that secondary surge of very cold air and so the timing on when the cold air comes in here and when the precipitation starts is really going to determine what color this is Monday if it's obviously kind of the cold air is lagging behind a little bit. It'll start as rain and then freeze on contact, and then it's going to change over into uh, snow, and that's going to be uh, throughout the first portion of the day on Monday. Then we clear out, and it gets really cold, some of the coldest we've seen around here in, in a couple of decades. 34 degrees today at noon, so we're right at freezing, just kind of flirting with that this morning. A little bit of mist around here. Uh, Mid-30s, maybe a sprinkle or two. It's not very likely, but just be on the lookout for that. And pretty much we're going to have to be sort of on the lookout for a little bit of winter precipitation all weekend long. Winter weather advisory up until 10 o'clock. More of these advisories and winter storm watches and probably warnings are going to be issued over the weekend, especially going in toward Monday. Tomorrow we're right at freezing, starting off 30 on Sunday. A little bit of wintry mix those two days, but Monday, Sunday night into Monday is the day we really have to watch out for starting in the 20s. Probably won't be getting out of uh, getting above freezing. Monday, then into Tuesday, we clear on out and going for 15 Tuesday morning that's here in town. Mike, just to recap, what could wind chills be like on that morning, uh, Tuesday morning? Uh, well, down in the single digits. Single and again, that's digits. here in town. So you clear out. The wind is going to keep temperatures up, but then you'll have wind chills. If the wind slackens off, we get even colder than that. We'll have temperatures, probably low teens, maybe even single digits in the hill country and just ridiculous wind chills Tuesday morning. Okay, got the word out. Thank you very much, Mike. Right now, 553, 33 degrees.
Let's take a look at your lottery numbers this morning. Pick 3080 with a fireball of 1. Your daily four numbers are 5964 fireball 0. And your cash 5 3 9 10 22 23. Your Texas two step 1 6 10 14 1. Hey, reminder about our KSEC community partner, University Health hosting a blood drive this month. It is happening the 18th and 19th from 10 to 3 at the Whitty Museum over on Broadway. If you'd like to participate, don't forget you do need to make an appointment and you can do so by calling this number later on. It's 210-358-2812. All this info is on ksaccommunity.com. Enchanted Rock may look a little bit more enchanting with this colder weather, but staff the park warned icy conditions will make for a dangerous visit this week. Staffs also told KSAT the weather's knocked out power to the park, meaning phone lines are down. For those who had a reservation decided not to visit because of weather, they can contact the park within the next few days to try to reschedule. We have that information on KSAT.com. Not the weekend to be traveling for sure. Well, the secret to getting out of a slump may be in what you're listening to. Just ahead on GMSA. We'll show you uh, how to create your own mental health playlist and trans guide. Samuel's keeping an eye on the situation and we are waiting for our crew to check in out there on westbound 10 way out in the Texas Hill Country past Kerrville where folks have been stuck on the road all night due to ice and snow. home is destroyed after high winds helped fuel a large fire in Northeast Bear County this morning. We'll have the latest on the investigation and more on those families impacted. And taking a live look outside with live cam, another cold morning. We're keeping a close eye on the weather and traffic. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday. It is February 12th. It's been a busy morning already. There's a lot of traffic and we are keeping a close eye in one near Kerrville. That's right. Also, we're going to have an update on school closures and delays coming up. There are a few of those, but we begin as always with Mike Coaster Hage and we need to pay extra close attention to his forecast today and moving forward in the coming right. days. I want to jump ahead because right at the end of long weather uh, last half hour, you asked what would wind chills potentially be on Tuesday and forecasting 15 degrees. If you have a five mile per hour winds, so just five, have, just five. I mean, hardly a puff. It would make it feel like seven degrees. If you had a, uh, a 10 mile per hour wind it'd make it feel like about three and a 15 mile per hour when you feel uh, like zero. Mm. So we're looking at not only just brutally cold temperatures, a puff of a breeze is gonna make it feel that much colder on uh, Tuesday. Today, we are starting off and uh, well, the picture looks pretty good right now. We don't see any anything on the lens, but within uh, at least last hour, the airport was reporting a little bit of freezing mist and drizzle. Temperatures right at uh, freezing San Antonio at, and as you can see, there's the report that's still a little bit of a uh, mist out there at the airport. Stinson at freezing. Randolph Kelly is basically at freezing, even though the thermometer says 33, you know, at the other end of the runway, it could be uh, below freezing out there and on some of the roads, 90 over there by Kelly. And we do have the winter weather advisory remains in effect for the next four hours up until 10 o'clock this morning. That does include San Antonio, Seguin, New Braunfels and going up 35 and going out 10 in toward the hill country. And it is for some uh, some freezing mist and some freezing drizzle out there. Visibility, uh, Kerrville, mile and a quarter, mile and three quarters, Victoria, two and a half rock springs a lot of this a little bit of fog but also just some of that mist that's out there right now there's nothing being picked up on radar at the moment but it is that fine fine mist and throughout the rest of today temperatures will stay basically steady this morning they may fluctuate a little bit including dropping down a degree or two so just kind of watch it with any moisture on the roads especially on the elevated roadways the things are going to be very very slippery and we're not going to warm up that much 35 at noon i'm going for 36 for high temperature today uh perhaps a, a stray sprinkle here or there it's not very likely we're still going to be under the gun for a little bit a little bit in the operative word of wintry mix tomorrow and then sunday but then sunday night into monday that's when things are really going to get uh, kind of rough around here and then we get that colder air coming in to Monday into Tuesday. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Samuel King 
been watching a lot going on at least uh, now this picture doesn't look bad but what's the latest sir well we've had uh, some uh, growing situations it seems like there might be uh, some ice uh, on the roads in the immediate uh, san antonio area this is a uh, 410 at uh, Calibre here. You see traffic uh, is moving uh, pretty well. We did have something not too far away at 410 in Ingram. We saw a little bit of a slowdown there. Uh, Check Stop was reporting some ice in this area here at the crossroads area, 410 and uh, I-10 on the roads. Uh, so watch out for, for that and, and take it easy uh, in that location. Of course, uh, the big uh, incident has been out in the hill country overnight. Actually, uh, this is I-10. This is Kerr County. This is Kimball County. This is Junction. This is the five mile stretch where I-10 is closed westbound. And even if you're coming eastbound, maybe you're going to Kerrville or Bernie, traffic is slow there as well. Uh, these are some pictures here of this situation uh, at the backup here. This is uh, out there in uh, between Kerrville and Junction, as we've been uh, mentioning. Uh, some people have been there since uh, 9, 10 p.m. last night on I-10. They've been out there all night long, and you're seeing some of uh, the, you see the roads are snow and ice covered there. Definitely a dangerous uh, situation. And if we could go here to the uh, traffic computer, some reminders about how to deal with cold weather. Uh, have your, make sure your batteries are checked in working order. Check your tire pressure. The cold weather can do a number on that. Make sure your gas tank is full or at least a half a tank in case you end up in a situation like that. And this is uh, the key thing. Keep a heavy blanket or blankets in your car in case you are dealing with a situation like we're seeing out there on I-10 in the Hill Country. Again, uh, take it easy on the roads here uh, in uh, the media San Antonio area as well, especially uh, 410 and north, uh, some of that freezing uh, mist, and we're having some intermittent uh, ice issues on the roads. So if you do need to uh, head somewhere, take plenty of time uh, this morning and also drive slowly, leave plenty of space for the drivers in front of you. We'll have more on all of this coming up in just a minute. Mark, Tiffany. Thank you, Samuel. Nature did no favors for firefighters battling a fire at a duplex in Northeast Bear County overnight. They say high winds caused flames to spread throughout the homes, sending two families out into the cold. Katrina Weber's in the 6600 block of Montgomery Drive near New World Drive with more. And Katrina will understand the families are not out in the cold anymore. That's right. Firefighters told us they were going to take them to a hotel to get them out of the cold because they can't go back home. Their homes are destroyed. Uh, this has been since about two o'clock this morning. I want to give you a look at the video uh, so that you can see how those flames were shooting out of the roof when firefighters got here. They say that they had gusts up to 20 miles per hour that were just whipping the fire around, spreading it from one side of the duplex to the other. The firefighters got the call again around two o'clock this morning. One of the residents called and said that there was a fire in the garage. By the time firefighters got here, it had spread up into the attic and then uh, throughout both the sides of the duplexes. Uh, there were eight people in all in the two sides, including some children and a cat. Everyone got out safely. And again, they have gone to a hotel so that they can get warm. Uh, firefighters did have their uh, arson investigators, the, the fire marshal's office out here looking for the cause, but we have not heard from them if they found anything just yet. Reporting live in Northeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man is in the hospital after trying to break into a home with a pickaxe. Police say it happened in the 100 block of Arlington Court around 1 this morning. That is near South Presa and I-10. They say the homeowner saw the break-in happening, pulled out a, a gun, and shot at the person three times. Police say one of the bullets hit the intruder in the chest. They say the suspect then ran off to a fire station for help and was taken to the the hospital in serious condition. San Antonio police need your help finding a robbery suspect. Please say this man you're about to see walked into a 7-Eleven at Fisher Road in 35 back on January 30th. They say he tried to walk out with several wine bottles. You see him right there in his hand. Police suspect threatened to come back and kill the clerk before driving off. If you recognize him, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. 
To the pandemic, local health officials report 902 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. They report 22 more people have died because of the virus. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the deaths reported happened over the past two weeks. He says the seven-day moving average is now at 890 cases per day. The mayor also reported that the number of people in the hospital dropped below 800 to 791 patients. Pharmacies will start administering the COVID-19 vaccine today across the country. The federal government directed 1 million doses to CVS, Walmart, Walgreens and Rite Aid stores. The doses are separate from the allocations the federal government sends to each state. They will be administered under each state's eligibility guidelines. You can find them out more about scheduling an appointment on KSAT.com. And because of the inclement weather, the following school districts are closed or delayed today. Bandera, Blanco, Hunt and Kerrville ISD have all canceled school today. Students will and are scheduled to go back on Tuesday after the holiday weekend. Okay, and Comfort ISD has canceled class today and on Tuesday, so students will go back on Wednesday. Lakey and Sabinal ISD have delayed start this morning. Classes and bus schedules will start two hours later than normal. CPS Energy has some ways to save energy in your home over the cold weekend. First, set your thermostat between 68 to 70 degrees and leave it there. If you get cold, put on some warmer clothes while you're indoors. Keep doors and windows closed to keep the warm air inside. Run your ceiling fans in reverse or clockwise. Heat rises, so this will help push the warmer air at the top of the room down. Find more resources on the cold weather right now at ksat.com. Right now it is 609, 33 degrees. Spending for Valentine's Day is expected to drop this year, and experts say it's because of the pandemic. But after the break, we will see why that doesn't mean the love is lost. And outside with live cam, plenty cold and about to get colder. Mike says some of the coldest air we've seen since about the 1980s. Not even kidding. More to come. The R.A. Callies was a great individual, a great San Antonian. Reverend Raymond A. Callies is known as a local black hero who promoted the philosophy and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. here in San Antonio. The fruits of his labor can still be seen today, like the naming of MLK Drive in middle school, funding the statue in MLK Plaza, and laying the groundwork for one of the largest MLK marches in the country. Reverend Callies kind of started marching before marching with people even knew uh, what marching was. He is a founder and a pioneer that we consider him, and we don't allow him to be left out of the conversation of the MLK March. Known as an Eastside community activist, he fought for traffic lights, better drainage, and the construction of the Freedom Bridge on New Braunfels Avenue to make sure that kids could walk to school safely. He saw that the condition of the African American could be better. So he was one of those people who advocated for better conditions. Today, Callies is also still remembered as an influential pastor and middle school history and woodshop teacher. That made the kids all feel like he was their dad or he was their uncle or he was making sure he looked out for us. So he would preach to us when we would get in trouble. So that was the good side of him too. Callies passed in 2011. A stretch of Rice Road bears his name, and the city now honors activists of today with the Reverend Callie's Courage Award. Last year's spending on Valentine's Day was forecasted at $27.4 billion, but this year the National Retail Federation believes we won't spend as much this year. Due to the pandemic, the National Retail Federation is forecasting that $21.8 billion will be spent on Valentine's Day this year. That's down from last year's $27.4 billion. According to the NRF survey, of 7,882 adult consumers, 74% of Americans said the pandemic will directly impact their plans for Valentine's Day, although 73% said they still plan on celebrating in some form. Only 24% of consumers plan to have an evening out, the lowest in the survey's history. However, 41% said they plan on a special dinner at home. Those planning to celebrate Valentine's Day are expected to spend on average of $164.76. That's down by about $32 per person from last year. The most popular Valentine's Day shopping destination this year is expected to be online with 39%. Department stores are next at 29%, followed by discount stores at 28%.
The most popular gifts are expected to be candy at 54%, greeting cards are next at 44%, and flowers at 36%. Back to you guys. Right now, 616, 33 degrees. We're going to talk to Mike in just a moment. Uh, weather is making a big disaster. The weather is actually making a big disaster on the roads this morning, right, Samuel? Yeah, especially up in the hill country, and you'll have more on that in uh, just a second. I wanted to show you again this camera. This is a uh, 1604 and uh, 35 at the northeast side. We had a, a lane blockage there uh, just a, a few moments ago, but that was uh, just uh, been cleared. So this is a look at it on the map. You can see a little bit of a slowdown here on 1604 uh, right uh, at the intersection. Also here, I-10, 410, uh, TxDOT still saying there was some ice reported here at the uh, crossroads uh, intersection and here's what you see. So uh, be careful here. And this is a, a Fredericksburg Road right here. You see that a little bit of a delay there too. So again, this is a morning uh, where you don't need to rush anywhere. Take it easy uh, on the roadways. But thankfully, uh, at the moment, uh, still not having seen a lot of uh, major issues in the immediate area. Of course, that is not the case uh, up to the north and west of Kerrville. Again, travel uh, not advised on I-10 west of uh, north and west of Kerrville. Uh, this is junction. This is the closure several hours. Say it again. Several hours. There have been people out here on I-10. And again, you can see uh, the slow conditions too, even on the side of I-10 where it is not closed all the way down here, down toward uh, Kerrville. Uh, so again, uh, snow and ice covered roads out there in the hill country travel uh, not advised actually anywhere in the uh, winter weather advisory area that Mike has been talking about. And we'll talk about it a little bit too. And that includes uh, some parts of uh, the northern uh, portions of uh, Bear County. And here's a look at I-10 to travel time. Once you get to Bernie at the moment, still our normal travel times here, 26, uh, 25 minutes. And then inside 1604 here, looking at 12 to 13 minutes again looking good but just because those times look good just because the speed looks good doesn't mean you can travel the speed limit guys the experts say drive to conditions not the speed limit all right mike Amen. osterhage you have a ton of talk about and yeah. this is a, a multi-day event isn't it right we're still going to be dealing with a little bit of a light wintry precipitation over the next uh, couple of days and then it is going to kind of uh, come to a head if you will on monday this morning we are right at 32 degrees at the airport and still at the top of six o'clock the airport is uh, reporting a little bit of freezing mist and freezing drizzle. Uh, nothing is showing up on radar right now. It is so fine out there, but with these temperatures flirting right around freezing in and around the metropolitan area and especially out in the hill country, and the moisture on the ground, the elevated uh, you know ramps, interchange ramps, uh, there could be some slippery spots. So watch it, and it's going to stay very cold today. A little bit of a breeze too, so it's really going to be kind of biting cold. Okay. We are looking at temperatures. The forecast for Tuesday morning is 15 degrees. That would be the coldest since uh, going back to 1989. On the 22nd and 23rd, we had that cold snap all around the country. Got down to 6 degrees on the 23rd. It was 13 on the 22nd. And then... This is, you know, some of the research that I was doing earlier this morning, and I've only seen a handful of temperatures down in the teens out at the airport officially, and this is going back even a couple of decades, back toward 2000, and the most recent was in uh, January of 2018. We got down to 19 degrees, but then on the 11, uh, in 2011, we got down to 19 as well, and back in uh, 2010, we got down to 16 degrees, and that was on January the 9th. So yeah, it is going to be some of the coldest out there that we've seen around here in a long, long time. And that's gonna be next Tuesday morning. Out at the airport, this doesn't look bad. As you can see, there's nothing showing up on the camera lens right now. But like I said, they are reporting a little bit of freezing mist out there. And temperatures, you know, with the exception basically of Castroville, even Hondo, you could say everybody is at freezing right now. Yes, those thermometer readings are 33, but you know, right down the road, a couple of blocks down the road from those uh, reporting locations, it could be at freezing. And we do have room to drop down a little bit more with dew point temperatures that are a few degrees below the actual air temperature, which you can't go below these numbers, but it could still drop down a little bit. So that's why we really have to watch it. There is a decent breeze out there right now, so we do have wind chill readings. Feels like 17 in Bernie, 21 at the airport, 22 Balverde. 
and the visibility in and around town, as you saw in live cam out there at the airport, is pretty good. But you head out I-10 in toward Kerrville, and visibility really drops off as all as well as down along the coastal plain. A little bit of fog, a little bit of mist as well, just kind of hanging there in the air. So what we have going on today, we've got the mist this morning. This computer model wants to have a little bit maybe this afternoon. It's not very likely, but you know, any little bit can cause problems. So you just have to watch it. Like Mark was saying, uh, tossing over to weather pretty much all weekend long. You got to be watchful for any sort of wintry precipitation. And then we go into tomorrow. We'll have some of it in the morning as well, and perhaps a little bit better chance for it. And then in the afternoon, it's going to be developing going into Sunday on top of that. Then we go into uh, Sunday evening, and that's when things are really going to start to uh, kind of ramp up as far as precipitation again, and we get that next surge of really, really cold air coming in here. So it looks like we'll be starting off with some uh, rain, freezing rain late Sunday night, early, early Monday morning. Then that's going to be changing over to snow, and this is going to be throughout the first half of the day on Sunday, on Monday, pardon me. So it'll be just a up until, say, early afternoon or noontime. Then we're going to clear out, but once we clear out, that then allows temperatures to just plummet by Tuesday morning. Today, thermometers aren't going to go much of anywhere, maybe up to 34 degrees today at noon and uh, 36. A sprinkle, possibly, just to be on the lookout for it. Again, best advice is just just watch it. Take it easy for the next few days. Winter weather advisory up until 10 o'clock. There's going to be a lot more of those posted in the next couple of days, especially uh, Monday and uh, Sunday night into Monday and then Tuesday. So. The next couple of days, freezing tomorrow morning, freezing Sunday morning, a little bit of wintry mix both days is possible, although not very likely. But then we go into Sunday night. Notice how we get down to 22 degrees Monday morning. That's even with cloud cover around here. We'll have a blanket on top of us, but still not in 22. And it does not look like we're going to be getting above freezing for, gosh, maybe 24, 36 hours. Sunday late afternoon into probably Tuesday, 36, maybe close to 48 hours below freezing. That's here again at the airport only hill country hours and then down to 15 by Tuesday morning. I don't think people truly understand how unusually cold that is for here. Yeah. But we've definitely seen how dangerous it could be. This conditions out there. Right. And, and again, the two things really cold temperatures, but the extended cold too. All right. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 623, 33 degrees. Music can be a way to help keep yourself mentally fit during a pandemic. Later on GMSA, we'll take a look at how to create your own mental health playlist. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Our strength, our power, our purpose starts within. So let's start there with collagen that supports our body from the inside out. Gillette ProGlide, five blades and a pivoting flex ball designed to get virtually every hair on the first stroke. So you're ready for the day with a fresh face for a fresh start. For a limited time, get a fifth cartridge free. Indulgent chocolate with a luscious caramel filling with love from San Francisco. Your deli caramel squares makes life a bite better. Six twenty-seven. The Spurs will start their rodeo road trip tonight in Georgia. The Silver and Black play the Atlanta Hawks tonight at six thirty San Antonio time. You can watch the game on Fox Sports Southwest. You can tune in to GMSA tomorrow morning for highlights and a reaction. Time now, 627, 33 degrees. House impeachment managers have given opening arguments in the former President Donald Trump's impeachment trial. Now the former president's defense attorneys will get to present their case today. And a look outside with TransGuide. Traffic is picking up this morning. If you are headed out, give, your sign, give yourself some time. Samuel will have the latest coming up.
We are under a winter weather advisory for the rest of the morning. What's in store today and this weekend? And that winter weather causing some issues on the roads. We'll have some more and some icy conditions coming up. A fire plus strong winds adds up to big trouble for firefighters as well as the people who lived in this duplex. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Coming up, House impeachment managers wrap their opening arguments in the case against Donald Trump. And now it's the defense's turn. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest. And a good morning to you. It's Friday, February 12th. If you are up getting the kids ready for school, some of you might want to put the backpack down. Let's take a look at some of the school districts that are closed today. That's right. Due to the uh, wintry weather, Bandera, Blanco, Hunt and Kerrville ISD have all canceled classes today. Students are scheduled to go back Tuesday after the holiday weekend. Comfort ISD has canceled class today and on Tuesday, so students will go back to school on Wednesday. Sabinal and Lakey ISD will have a delayed start this morning. Classes and the bus schedule will start two hours later than normal. You can find an updated list this morning on ksat.com. Now let's go to meteorologist Mike Ostrich with the latest on what truly is a big chill settling in. Oh, most definitely. Cold yesterday, cold today. We don't have the rain like we had yesterday, but we have, have had and still have a little bit of mist and still at the top of six o'clock out at the airport, they were reporting some uh, light freezing drizzle. Now this view over there, this is 10 at 410 looking toward downtown. Uh, all of the elevated ramps and interchanges there. Traffic is moving along fairly well, but these are the th areas where you have to watch because earlier this morning there was a little bit of uh, some mist on this camera and there has been some mist out there. So you just have to watch it with these temperatures. And again, it is freezing at the airport. There is room to where it could cool down even a little bit more. You can always drop as far down as the dew point temperature. We've got a wind out of the north at 14, and that's just adding a bite to some of these very that damp cold out there. Visibility, um, a lot of mist and even some fog out in portions of the hill country and some fog down there along the coastal plain. And mold mountain seed are both on the low side. As far as the rest of today, we've got a little bit of mist around the area basically cloudy and cold and I guess the best way to say to put it is over the next few days just be on the lookout if there is a speck of mist or something like that with these very cold temperatures there may be a, a sprinkle or two later on today some wintry mix tomorrow as well as during the day on Sunday it's going to be very cold we will have freezing temperatures starting off both tomorrow and Sunday then late Sunday night into Monday, we get the next surge of really cold air coming on in here and another big push of moisture moving on in. And so we will have some freezing rain and then changing over to snow on Monday, overnight Sunday into Monday. Then we clear out and it is going to be extremely cold by Tuesday morning. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and what is the latest, sir? This is 281 at almost, Mike. You kind of see that sort of mist that you were talking about there. So that's something uh, you're going to encounter especially uh, north of town, and it doesn't take much to cause an issue. Uh, we had some uh, sort of reports of some issues up here by Timberwood Park. Once you get down to Boverty Road on 281, eight minutes is your drive time down to 42 miles per hour heading south 39. It's uh, dropping as we speak there on uh, 51 miles per hour heading uh, northbound. So this is uh, some of the things that we're talking about here this morning. Take it easy. Uh, 30 minutes all the way in from Boverty into downtown San Antonio. Uh, still some fairly good traffic times all around uh, the immediate San Antonio area, but just because uh, it looks clear, uh, you can have some ice issues. There's a lot of rain yesterday. There's still some s slick spots. As I was coming to work uh, this morning, you might be encountering that in your neighborhood as well. So again, uh, be careful out there. And we also have this issue here. This is I-10, been closed all night here in uh, Kimball County. This is Kerr County. Kerrville's down here, Junction's here. You see the white there means it's a closure, about five mile stretch of there from 290 uh, up to 477. And then you have 472. Then you have the delays heading uh, southbound here or uh, eastbound here on I-10 and heading northbound. Our Stephen Cavazos has been on the way to this scene. And you can imagine if it's been closed for hours, uh, <laughs> it's, take, it's taken a hard time to get there. But he has uh, the latest on what's uh, going on out there with this closure on I-10. 
Hey, good morning, everyone. Stephen Cavazos uh, reporting here. We are stuck in traffic here on the I, the westbound lane of I-10. Uh, we have spoken to the current Kimball County Sheriff's Office just over the phone a little mo a few moments ago, and they've confirmed that this is uh, resulting in multiple crashes. Thankfully, none have been fatal. Uh, we have heard from TxDOT. They've been tweeting saying that the I-10 westbound lane at mile marker 477 in Kerr County, as of right now, remains closed. Now, the Kimball County Sheriff's Office, as we just mentioned, has confirmed confirmed multiple crashes. Again, thankfully, none have been fatal. Uh, some people have actually been out here stuck in traffic since 10 last night, and I've been communicating with some of them who are stuck in their cars right now. Just take a look at some of these photos that they've shared, uh, but this is what we're also looking at right now here, stuck in traffic. Again, this is on the I-10 westbound. We are trying to get a little bit closer in to find out what exactly is happening, but right now it looks like that's going to take some time, and I can tell you by just being out here and staying inside the car, we have spotted some sleet and ice on the road. So if this is in route to anywhere you are going, it may be wise to find an alternative route or just stay home because the roads are very slick. On our way up here, we even had to take it extremely slow. So it took us a little bit longer than usual uh, as the roads are pretty icy right now. We'll be working to gather more information as that becomes available. Stephen, thank you for that report from the Texas Hill Country this morning. Well, firefighters don't yet know how it started, but an overnight fire has ended with two families displaced. Broke out in one side of a duplex, then spread throughout the entire building. Katrina Weber is live in the 6600 block of Montgomery Drive with that story. Katrina, you mentioned there were some children among those families. Is everyone safe? Yeah, everyone is safe. There were five adults and three children in total living in both sides of the duplex. All of them displaced. Firefighters took them to a hotel to get them out of the cold because they can't live in these uh, homes anymore. Uh, this fire broke out around two o'clock this morning. And let me show you the video from that time when firefighters found flames coming through the roof. Again, they say that one person on one side of the, the, uh, the duplex did call and say that he saw fire in his garage. By the time firefighters got here, uh, those flames again coming through the roof, they spread up into the attic and then uh, onto the other side of the duplex. The fire marshal's office was out here earlier going through uh, what's left of those homes, trying to find the cause of the fire, but we have not heard any word just yet how the fire started. Reporting live in Northeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The family of an off-duty SAISD detective Cliff Martinez is hoping his legacy will inspire the next generation of law enforcement officers. Martinez was working as a security guard at an IHOP in the 700 block of Hot Wells Boulevard when police say he was run over by two men in a car and killed. To honor his love of police work, the district began a scholarship under his name, but his family hopes to raise more money by raffling a 2010 Chevy Camaro later this month. His father, Albert Martinez, believes his son left a lasting impact in the community. I just never knew just uh, how well and respected my son was uh, in this community. They miss him as much as I miss him. The family is still selling raffle tickets and the sports car will be raffled off on February 21st and they hope to raise $100,000. Well, House impeachment managers have wrapped up their opening arguments in former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. And today, lawyers for the former president will get the chance to lay out their case. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has what we can expect from Washington. And good morning. Yesterday was a day of emotional and searing moments as House Democrats continued to play never before seen video of the Capitol riot and doubled down on their claims that Trump's words incited the attack. And today, we'll hear from the defense. House impeachment managers wrapping their opening arguments in the case against Donald Trump. On day three of the historic trial, Democrats zeroing in on Trump. Is there any political leader in this room who believes that if he is ever allowed by the Senate to get back into the Oval Office, Donald Trump would stop inciting violence to get his way? Would you bet the future of your democracy on that? The prosecution pleading to senators that the rioters felt they were following his direct orders. And today, it'll be the defense's turn. They haven't in any way tied it to Donald Trump. Lead defense attorney David Schoen expected to argue Trump's words are protected under the First Amendment. First of all, in no circumstances could it be incitement. Before Trump's team even presents their case, House managers were already taking aim. There's nothing in the First Amendment 
or anywhere else in the Constitution that can excuse your betrayal of your oath of office. It's not a free speech question. Ahead of Trump's defense, Democrats with one question for Republicans who might still not be convinced. If this is not impeachable, what is? He struck a match and he aimed it straight at this building, at us. And like the prosecution, the defense will have up to 16 hours over two days for their counter argument. But Trump's defense has already signaled that they may not use all of their allotted time and could wrap up within three or four hours. By the way, a conviction is still highly unlikely. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. 641, about 33 degrees. Up next, the secret to getting out of a slump may be in what you're listening to. After the break, we will learn how to create your own mental health playlist. Whether you're listening to that or this. Research has proven that music can trigger dopamine releases in several parts of the brain and affects everything from our mood to productivity to memory. You can amplify that effect once you put a little science behind it. To craft your playlist, start with two major purposes. One that will relax you and one that will alert you. Then divvy up the songs into more specific groups like mood boosting, grounding, or focusing. You can constantly use your different playlists uh, to balance yourself. Include some songs from distant memories to engage your mind and activate your habits. I play those exact songs that my mother used to listen to when she and I worked together. Our brains naturally synchronize to the rhythm of the music we're listening to, so amplify the effects on a run. Build a playlist that starts off slower and then increases in BPM as you jog, or vice versa. If you're typing at work, tailor a playlist with a lower BPM. And it is like personalized medicine, medicine with absolutely no side effects. And you don't have to always listen to spa music to relax or rock and roll to hype you up. What's important is your individual association with the music and forming habits. So if KISS helps you fall asleep, then that's what goes on your playlist. And if you need good songs fast, apps like Runkeeper can even make you a playlist that matches your running speed. David Sears, KZ12 News. Well, we've had some icing and some issues way out in the Texas Hill Country, but so far so good here in town. We are seeing some more traffic this morning, and Samuel, what can you tell us? Yeah, we are starting to see a little bit. It's taken a, a little bit to uh, see some of these issues on the roads, but as more people are getting out and about on the roads, uh, we're seeing stuff like this. This is a uh, 35 at uh, South Cross. Not uh, you see the uh, emergency vehicles there, and one thing we have been noticing are, are a lot of uh, the trucks there that might be treating some of the roads across the area. Uh, but there you see this is 35 uh, heading into uh, town there, and you can see the slowdown there that's building. Let's show you one more transguide view if we could. Uh, this is 410 at Ingram. We've been watching this for a little bit, and now we're seeing the slowdown again. And uh, we mentioned that TxDOT was uh, reporting some icy conditions uh, at the crossroads area, which is not too far from there. But you can see uh, that slowed down and it's only uh, getting worse. Uh, we've been telling you all morning, of course, uh, about the situation in the hill country travel not advised on I-10. Let's call it north and west uh, of Bernie, but really uh, in lots uh, of our region travel not advised. And I'm going to show you this and just to let you know, this is not here. But just to give you an idea of what could happen and what we could see, particularly Monday morning, this is the Austin area south of downtown. Look at that. Uh, 35. Uh, this is uh, the toll road here. 130, 290. Uh, numerous accidents and incidents <clears throat> up there in the Austin area. Thankfully, we are not seeing that here yet. But if you have know anyone in Austin or heading to Austin, this isn't the day to head up there. Uh, the second day in a row, we're having these issues there. Thankfully, here we're not seeing uh, as much of that, but again, uh, that the potential is there for that when we have some of these conditions, guys. Mike? Yeah, uh, we were talking about how we're going to be so cold by Tuesday morning, but also what we're looking at is an extended period of very cold temperatures starting really Sunday late afternoon all the way through Tuesday. And we've only had a handful, as a matter of fact, five times in the past 30 years where we've had uh, below freezing temperatures for more than 24 hours. Of course, uh, back in um, 2011, it was for 65 hours, the first through the fourth of February. And then uh, back in 2018, right after the, the first of the year, right there. It was uh, pretty darn cold as well, but we are looking at an extended period of very cold temperatures Sunday in through Monday and Tuesday. And 
uh, like Sam was talking about, there is some freezing being reported. Still reporting a little freezing drizzle out there at the airport. Uh, don't get a false sense of security this morning necessarily, just because we're not seeing the heavy rain like yesterday, but there is some of that mist out there. Now traffic, though, 410, as you can see, is moving along fairly well, both directions, even on the access roads, but of course on those elevated roads. And that's where you just have to kind of watch it. We've got these temperatures, basically everybody, with the exception of Castorville, Pleasanton, but you know, everybody's at or below freezing. Hello to see yeah, those two thermometers are 33 degrees, but down the block could be right at freezing. So we need to watch it with that. And then we've got the wind chill temperatures that really add a, I mean, just make it hard to be outside. 17 in Bernie stage right now, 22 at the airport, Balverde and 23 is what it feels like at Randolph. There is some reduced visibility, of course, heading out in toward the hill country. Some of that uh, kind of mist and a little bit of fog as well. And temperatures up to the north, it is, these are the actual air temperature readings. Uh, 10 in Amarillo, 14 in Lubbock, and then you've got the low 20s uh, up around Dallas, Abilene, and we are going to be getting another push of this colder air coming on in here. So we'll be seeing some low temperatures by Monday morning down in the mid to lower 20s, and then we're looking at teens by some of this air coming in here by Tuesday morning. That's that, that next push. So again, the computer model, and again, the best advice also, any time really between now and next Monday afternoon, just be on the lookout for any little bit of precipitation falling, even though there's not a lot of it. Some of the computer models have little bits here and there and could be freezing on contact with these temperatures hanging around freezing going in through uh, even this afternoon. Uh, tomorrow as well. We'll have a little bit in the morning and then it looks like we'll start to see more picking up uh, tomorrow evening around the area and then overnight into Sunday. And then it's going to be Sunday afternoon when things really start to pick up Sunday afternoon and Sunday night. We get that cold air coming in here. Another big batch of moisture. So freezing rain and some snow into Monday morning and then we're going to be clearing out and then it gets really cold. We'll still be cold enough on Monday, but even colder Tuesday morning. 34 degrees at noon today. Cloudy skies. You know, there could be a speck of mist out there. You can't completely rule it out. Not as much as yesterday. Just be on the lookout for it. Just take it easy is the best advice. 36 this afternoon. We do have the winter weather advisory for the northern half of the viewing area, including San Antonio and Seguin, New Braunfels up until 10 o'clock this morning. Tomorrow morning we are at freezing. Little bit of wintry mix. Little bit on Sunday. Uh, and then that's going to be Saturday into Sunday. And then Sunday night and Monday is when it really starts to hit home. And down 22 Monday morning, 15 Tuesday morning. And this is the weekend to lock in KSAT 12, KSAT.com, and the free Weather Authority app. Yep. Sarah, Katie are going to be covering it all this weekend. We'll Thank have you. all those details. Thank you, Mike. 651, 33 degrees. 71% of Americans don't know working remotely in another state can impact how much taxes they owe. Tomorrow on GMSA, some other tax tips to keep in mind before April 15th. Outside with live cam, a huge winter weather outbreak headed this way. It's already very, very cold, but about to get, to get much colder. More to come here on GMSA. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 6.55 uh, before uh, we head out this morning. Still have this situation in the Hill Country. Travel not advised between uh, Bernie and uh, Junction on I-10. Closure westbound and some major delays eastbound. The roads are still ice and snow covered out there. Uh, having some reports of some uh, icy roads here in Northern Bear County on 281 uh, south of Timberwood Park all the way down to uh, Bolverde Road. That's causing a bit of a, a slowdown on 281 as you head to 1604. Uh, travel down to 43 three miles per hour. And here's a look at Transkai. This is I-10 at the Y. Uh, Mike, we're going to need to watch these elevated roadways like here in a crossroads area throughout the day. Exactly. Uh, top of the hour, weather service is not reporting any freezing drizzle a lot at the airport like has been the case the past couple of hours. And you can see traffic out there is moving along fairly well. Temperatures, though, are flirting right around freezing or just below that. So, you know, just watching any damp spots on those elevated roadways. Wind chill temperatures are cold. Bundle up and we have the winter weather advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning, San Antonio and into the hill country throughout the day temperatures aren't going anywhere and uh, watch it this weekend and watch this weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you, Samuel and Mike. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at nine.